Today we're going to talk about frozen shoulder. Super, super common for people who have had damage to their neurologic system that has resulted in loss of arm movement. So in this video, you're going to learn what frozen shoulder is, who is at the most risk for developing a frozen shoulder, and of course, exercises to help unfreeze that shoulder to really take your arm rehab to the next level. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and your health to live an overall more active, more mobile, pain-free, happier, healthier life. Now, before we dive into today's video, there is a PDF handout that goes along with today's video that will have pictures and descriptions of all the exercises that we're going to go through today. All the PDFs handouts on this channel are available to our gold and our bronze monthly members. To learn more about our membership programs and to sign up, visit rehab-hq.com. But now I do know there's a lot of you that watch this channel that can't afford that. So in addition to the link to sign up or to get access to the handout that's going to go with this video. I have also included a free PDF handout in the description below of a shoulder stretching routine. If you are someone that has frozen shoulder, there are some excellent exercises in that handout. So definitely check that out. That is free and that is the second link in the description below. But now let's dive into this topic of frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis is the technical name for frozen shoulder. And we should start with just identifying some of the key structures in the shoulder that are important to know before we actually talk about what frozen shoulder is. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about this product that this company sent to me called the Core Stretch. Now, when I first saw this product, I actually reached out to the company to see if they would send me one to sample because of the design of this product for so many uses in the neuro rehab community. Now, the main purpose of this is to stretch the back out, which I think it does a fabulous job. It has these two pads at the bottom. You just kind of place them right in the crux of your hip. You reach your arms out and you really do feel a great stretch just by leaning forward. There's a pivot on the base so you can actually rotate side to side and it really does feel great to stretch your back because the counter force is kind of right at your hips. It really does elongate that spine. However, when I saw the product, the design of it is what had me interested because of all the other uses in the neuro rehab community that you can do with this. For instance, many of you have seen me use the Swifter to work on early stage arm movement. Well, this device, which is originally intended to be a stretching device, can actually do the same thing. So you just put your hands on the top and it gives you a really nice early phase arm movement exercise if you're someone that is working on reaching, right? So you just sit and what we would call this is kind of active assist, using your other arm to assist in that forward reach. Now, it is height adjustable, which a lot of you have seen me do with the Swifter where I set it on different height surfaces. This, you don't actually have to do that. You can just, because it's got this height adjustable feature, you can make the, the exercise more difficult by just making it longer. And now you're pushing those arms kind of uphill a little bit. So to advance that reaching activity, you can just extend the arm and push it uphill. Now, once you get really good at that, you can put one hand on it and kind of do the same thing. Now, because it has a pivot point, it's going to make it a little bit more challenging to keep your arms straight. So that's why I usually recommend that you use your other arm to help a little bit in the early stages just to kind of set yourself up for success. But there's more that you can do with this that I've been messing around with, and that is to use it for standing activities. So in standing, it's the perfect tool for those of you where your arm draws up when you walk. I've talked about this in other videos, but that's usually when the lower body and the upper body kind of link up together abnormally. 
So when you're walking and you're trying to control your legs, your arm kind of what I usually call in therapy is just trying to kind of help out, but not doing a really good job of it. So you try and put more effort into working your legs and that arm draws up. I've made complete videos on this where we work on breaking up that pattern by giving some kind of uh, an, a challenge for the arms to keep the arms straight and work on standing balance to kind of separate or break up that upper body and that lower body. This tool is perfect for that. Now I am 5'2", and this is the tallest height. So if you're taller, you would just need to set it up on something. So you're just gonna hold on to it and just push it forward and either do a weight shift and a knee lift or a step with the main goal being that you keep pushing those arms forward. Again, breaking up that tendency or breaking up that pattern where your arm wants to draw up when you're standing. If your arm automatically draws up when you stand up, then you just work on weight shifting. Again, trying to push this forward and shift, lift the heel, shift and lift the heel. But again, anyway, the original intent of this product was to get that nice back stretch, which it does an excellent job of doing that. But then if you are someone with a neurologic injury, there are all these other ways that you can use this one tool. Link to learn more about this product is in the description below. As usual with any product that I advertise or I talk about on this channel, Rehab HQ does receive a small commission. So if you do purchase this product, we are so, so grateful for your support of this channel. But more than that, you are gonna get a very useful product. Most of you know most of these structures because I talk about them quite a bit on this channel. But as a brief review, the shoulder is made up of a ball and a socket. The socket is the shoulder blade. That's that flat bone on the back of the shoulder. The side of that flat bone, that shoulder blade, has the cup on it, kind of at the top. And then the ball is at the top of the arm bone. That fits nicely in the socket. Under ideal conditions, when we raise our arm up, that ball glides nicely inside that socket. Then we have a capsule that attaches to the top of the arm bone and then also attaches to that shoulder blade. And that's what kind of holds that ball in that socket. Now what adhesive capsulitis is or frozen shoulder is when that capsule becomes inflamed, it also thickens a little bit and becomes stiff. When this happens, that kind of, it's I, I visualize it, it's like shrink wrap, right? If you heated shrink wrap, it would pull in and it just doesn't leave enough um, uh, space between the ball, the cup and the ball for that arm bone to glide as nicely in that socket. Or maybe it glides, but it is painful basically because it's just too short. So hopefully that made sense, but those are the structures that are important. That's kind of what adhesive capsulitis is. One of the Main risk factors or the people that develop frozen shoulder are anyone who has had their arm immobilized for any period of time. So that's why it's such a valuable topic to go over on this channel for any of you that have had neurologic injury that has impacted your arm. There probably was a period of time where that arm was immobile. And I do think that adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder is a bigger limiting factor to restoring active arm movement versus spasticity. Even though I talk a ton on this channel about spasticity, what I see clinically is it's this adhesive capsulitis or this lack of soft tissue flexibility that really in that capsule that really causes a lot of the barriers for active movement, but also is what makes um, the shoulder painful for a lot of you. But there are other things that can call cause someone to not move their arm for a period of time. I think the flu shot has contributed to some of the cases of frozen shoulder that I have seen. So just for any of you that maybe don't have a neurologic injury, but you're a caregiver watching these videos, anytime you get the flu shot, this is just a little uh, side note tip make sure for the, those couple of days after you get the flu shot that you're hanging from a pull-up bar, all making sure you're doing that full range of shoulder range of motion after that. I do know that after the COVID vaccine, I was susceptible to just unconsciously not moving my arm because it was a little bit sore. And so I know that I was very intentional about 
doing stretches every single day for that shoulder to make sure that I wasn't going to unconsciously not move the arm. But other things that we know are kind of correlated or there's people that uh, are at a higher likelihood of developing frozen shoulder. And those are people with any kind of a me metabolic dysfunction, such as diabetes. And some thyroid issues have been associated with making someone more likely to to develop a frozen shoulder. And under normal conditions, for those of you that haven't had a stroke, there's usually a period of time where you will slowly lose motion and the, the shoulder will slowly become stiff. And then for a subset of people with frozen shoulder, it will just kind of resolve. We call that kind of like the thawing phase and you will get that range of motion back. But unfortunately, for those of you that watch this channel, I don't think it's going to be something where you're just spontaneously going to get your range of motion back. I think you're going to need to be very intentional about going through the program that we're going to go through today on a daily basis. So before I dive into the demonstration, the exercises, you know me by now, I'm going to give a little bit of a rationale or kind of like a template that I usually follow when I know someone's primary limiting factor for their arm mobility is frozen shoulder. And the first part of that is the shoulder blade. So moving that flat bone on the back of the shoulder first. I've made several videos on shoulder blade or scapular mobility recently, and I will link those videos in the description below. But there's a couple of reasons why you want to start there. One is, and most of you already know this, is that when you do any type of arm motion where you're bringing the arm away from the body, that shoulder blade needs to move. So if you skip over that and you go right to the arm motion, you're putting a little bit more tension on that capsule and so it's going to be painful. So always starting with shoulder range, shoulder blade mobility first and we will go through a couple of exercises when we get to the exercises in today's video. So that's always number one. Number two is graded exposure. Pain is the main problem that is associated with frozen shoulder that limits most people in adhering to a home exercise program to restore normal arm range of motion if you have frozen shoulder. So graded exposure is a technique that we use with people that just have pain. And what that basically means is you want to ex start exposing that arm to gentle motion where you're getting some pain, but the pain is still tolerable. And that needs to be your thought before you even think about getting to what I call like the stretching phase. The reason I put this in here intentionally, and I think you should be intentional about having a graded exposure component, is that what I see more often than not is people go right to doing their self range of motion. Ow, that hurts. Ow, that hurts. They stop there. They never advance that because they're not thinking, okay, we need to address this from a pain point of view. And yes, there's going to be some pain. I'm going to slowly expose that arm to little, little bits of motion that are tolerable. That kind of helps to program the brain to be a little bit less sensitive to that motion. If you go right to the point where you have pain and then you stop, your brain, your alarm signals are going to go off in your brain and you're probably subconsciously never going to get over that hurdle. So what we're trying to do is you're exposing it a little bit, looking at the arm. It's not broken. It's still in the socket. It's not being pulled out. Nothing is tearing. This is what you should be going through mentally during that exposure component. Okay, bring it back down. All right, what your brain is doing as you go through this exercise is it's feeling the sensation of discomfort, but it's not setting off the alarm signals. That's where we need to, that's what we're trying to define here is a little bit of discomfort, but not having your brain sending off the fire alarm saying, stop, stop, stop. That's the whole purpose of graded exposure. So the motions that I usually like to do that are just internal and external rotation with the arm by the side first before you go into a little bit of movement of the arm away from the body. But we'll go into that a little bit more when we actually get to the demonstration. But very intentional about a defined graded exposure component of your rehab routine. And then we go into 
actual range of motion where we are trying to stretch that capsule out a little bit. Now, when we get to this phase or this part of the rehab program, I always like to explain to everyone that it is going to be painful. The main symptom of frozen shoulder is pain. So before you even start this component, I usually tell or recommend people decide what is tolerable pain for you. I usually say on a scale from zero to 10, 10 being the worst pain you've ever felt, zero being no pain at all, uh, you want to stay like five and below. Now, some people tell me they can tolerate more than that. And then, okay, maybe we'll push it a little bit. The way you're going to know if it's tolerable for you or not is if you have less motion the next time you try and do that, or you avoid doing these exercises again, anything like that is a sign that you probably pushed it beyond what was tolerable for you. So figure out what that number is, go into these stretches knowing that you are going to be in a little bit of discomfort, and then stay on or below that number on that zero to 10 scale. Okay, so just to review, scapular motion first, a little bit of desensitization or graded exposure, a uh, little component of that next, and then get into the stretching. Now let's go ahead and dive into the demonstration. Like I said, we're going to start with the shoulder blade. This is going to be very basic because I've done entire videos on shoulder blade mobility. And again, those are linked in the description below. If you know that this is helpful or you go through some of the ones we go through today and you know it's helpful, there's more shoulder scapular mobility exercises in the videos in the links below. But I think at the very least, before you get into trying to move that arm bone, you're just going to do shoulder blade rolls. Forwards and backwards. So from the side, really try and go forward, up, around, and back. Forward, up, around, and back forward, up, around, and back. Now, some of you don't have um, active movement. You can't actively move that shoulder blade. But what I've found, and don't say you don't think you can't do it until you try it, what I have found is that sometimes people can get their hands clasped behind them. It's not easy. They usually reach around with their uninvolved hand and kind of get that get those hands clasped together and then just help it. So move the shoulder blades back, move them up. And then as far as the forward component, clasp those hands in front of you and stretch those arms out in front of you within a pain-free range. So that's probably going to be, that's probably a little bit too high, but maybe down here, we're just trying to move those shoulder blades and you're using your other hand to help if you have hemiparesis. So just moving helping as much as you can. Now, for some of you, this might be uncomfortable, but again, you want to push into that pain a little bit. There should be a little bit discomfort, but still tolerable. All right, so for this exercise, now we're getting into that graded exposure a little bit. If you can't stand, you can do this laying down. I always recommend someone purchases a mat table, a high-low mat table, a folding one. I have a link for one in the description below. It doesn't work as well on a bed because your bed, your arm's going to hit the mattress, but on a high-low table, it does work pretty well. You can just lay face down uh, with your arm hanging off the side and with a weight on your wrist, what it does, it just helps to distract that arm a little bit. If you're someone that you know you have a subluxation, don't do this if you don't know whether or not you have a subluxation, which is another problem that can occur after a stroke, then don't do this exercise. But a subluxation is where the arm bone basically falls partially out of the socket uh, after a stroke. So you don't want to do this because this is going to kind of make that a little bit worse. So if you know you don't have a, um, a uh, shoulder subluxation, you're just going to uh, put that weight on that arm and just do little circles. Clockwise, counterclockwise, graded exposure, just gently getting that arm to move. This is also great if you have spasticity, gentle motion. Doesn't have to move very much. It's almost just like a pendulum. That's what you want to think about. 
you just get it going a little bit and then that weight just kind of keeps that motion going and you just try and stay as relaxed as possible. So this is a pretty cheap tool. I'll put a link for this in the description below, but it's just a pulley system. You don't need anything attached to a wall. You could just hook it on the top of a door frame and sit in a chair. And basically you just strap, if you need to, if you don't have grip, you just strap your hand to the pulley and you're using your other hand to kind of help move it. Again, I'm considering this more of like a graded exposure kind of thing still. So you want to think that you're just trying to go as much as you can to that point of pain that you can tolerate and you're using the other hand to help. Okay, so I would go facing away from the wall and then I would also do it this way. You're just getting a little bit of a different angle of pull. So I would do it in all directions, getting all the ang different angles, just kind of getting that arm moving in a nice rhythmic motion. Now this, this is the involved hand. I just kind of switched hands. You can also go out to the side if you can keep your arm straight. Try and keep it straight. If you can't, you can add an elbow mobilizer, which I show quite a bit. You're just trying to get that arm to move away from your body using your other hand to help. If you can't, if your arm pulls in, try putting an elbow mobilizer on it and do the same thing. All right, now most of you have seen me do this in other videos, but if you haven't, we're just working that range of motion with a cane. If you need to, strap your hand to the cane, working that external rotation. Just gentle, remember it should be a little bit painful, but tolerable. And you wanna do it with your arm by the side, rotating out. And then if you can, move that elbow away from the side, and then you're going kind of up at an angle. And then from there, now we're going to kind of work up overhead. So we call this shoulder flexion. Going up as high as you can. And then you also want to do this with the elbows bent. And again, reaching up overhead. And then that is it for this video. Don't forget there's a PDF handout that goes along with this video that is available to our gold and our bronze monthly members as well as a free PDF handout in the description below that has a complete stretch shoulder stretching program. To get instant access to that free PDF handout, click on the second link in the description below. If you're new to this channel and you like these kind of videos and you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so that you'll get notified every time I upload new videos. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.